Hello and welcome to the Aaron Warner podcast on iCode Media. We're at Vision Expo and I had the opportunity to attend the NeuroLens N3 launch. And if you haven't seen this yet, you are really missing out. We had a conversation today with the folks from NeuroLens talking about where they started, where they're at now with the N3. I know you're going to love it. So we want to hear from you. So please join the conversation by leaving a comment, sharing with a friend, and of course, leaving a five-star review. Also be sure to support those who support us. Discovering the impact of Life Meter this year has been truly transformative for motivating my patients with macular degeneration to embrace carotenoid supplements. With this non-invasive device, we can now quantitatively show that supplements are working. Life Meter assesses carotenoid concentration in the skin, reflecting fruit and vegetable intake, and indicating levels in other vital tissues like the retina and brain. Supported by over 30 peer-reviewed publications, Life Meter's accuracy, consistency, and effectiveness have been validated in 2,000 subjects of varying background. What's more, it offers the flexibility to prescribe the best suited products for each patient. My patients love knowing their numbers and witnessing improvements in as little as a month. Better yet, compliance with carotenoid supplements has surged, doubling our sales of MacuHealth since the Life Meter's implementation. All right, welcome to the Aaron Warner Podcast. We are live at Vision Expo West, and I'm sitting with three rock stars here, good friends and rock stars. So, Brant Southwell, Davis Corley, and Pierre Bertrand. Did I say that with the uh, the right little accent there? Of uh, Neuralens, and I've got to tell you guys, you're going to love this uh, discussion because they have launched the N3, and if you're not familiar with it, you need to, but we're going to talk a little bit about it today. But before we do that, I want you to, uh, to introduce yourselves so we know who you are, and uh, then we'll get started. So, Brant, we'll start with you. Yeah, Brant Southwell. Uh, I lead the marketing team at NeuroLens. Uh, been there for about three years. Davis Corley, uh, co-founder. Been, been able to be on this journey for about 11 years and uh, enjoying every minute. The best chapter is being launched here at Vision Expo West, so uh, excited to tell you more about that. Pierre Bertrand, I'm in my fifth year. Uh, actually discovered NeuroLens through Davis uh, at Vision Expo, so uh, I couldn't agree more. This is uh, 11 years in the making and the best chapter of NeuroLens yet, so we're excited to share it with you, Doctor. It, it is, and um, so Davis, you've been around since the beginning, co-founder, and I remember, so walk us through a little history because the original was, was fantastic, but big. Right, very big and fantastic, and um, and I remember seeing that actually in San Diego at uh, Dr. Steve Klein's office, and uh, we we That's looked right. at it and said, hey, this is going to be a, a deal breaker, but it's going to be a, a super innovative, and it's going to you know rock the industry in, in a good way, but how the hell do I get this thing into my office? Right, right, and that was our challenge, and and so take us from there to the, the second iteration and then where we're at now. So we, we were fortunate that we really found uh, a key innovation in that early, early device technology. And, and you're being very, very kind. It was enormous, would never have made it into mainstream optometry. And if we're honest, it, it was really closer to a seven minute test at the time. We hadn't really honed our skills at how to make binocular vision binocular vision testing, simple, easy, and something that was completely reproducible and objective. And so the beginning stages were extremely exciting, a lot of innovation, but compared to what we're looking at today, it, it's, a, it's a totally different animal. So I, I'd say the evolution process from early days to today, we, we look like a completely different company altogether. And that's to thank with the gentlemen that are here with Brant and Pierre and, and a lot of the R&D team heavily invested in our continued innovation on this product offering. 100% agree. And so let's talk about why a doc would want to bring this into the practice, why a, a practice needs this. Um, and I'll share my own story. So I, I trained with some of the best binocular vision doctors in the country. I don't like binocular vision. It, it, I just can't get around it. Right? I, I, I love it, I respect it, and I'm quick to refer to my colleagues who do it, but in the clinic, I just, it's its painful for me to, uh, to do. I just don't get excited about it, but I know that it's there. And I knew that we were missing 
some of the measurements and some of the, the symptoms and issues and challenges with patients that, you know, number one, they weren't telling us, um, but two, I didn't think that, that we were picking up in our exam or we do a really good exam. But I, I just, I don't think we were picking them up. And I know you've all done some, some research into that. And what you found is that what, one in 10 patients talk to their doctor about symptoms, which means 90% of them that have symptoms aren't saying anything because why on earth would I tell my doc that my back and shoulders and neck hurt right. or that right. I've got a headache, you know, when I'm here about my eyes. Yep. And from a non-practitioner's perspective, it, it really looked like binocular vision was this amazing art and not as much of the science that Neurolens is really endeavoring to, to help bring to the binocular vision realm. And that's from a non-practitioner's perspective. And um, that was something that we saw all these patients that were showing up at the annual eye exam and they could be helped right then and there. Uh, and what an opportunity it is to be able to elevate those patients in the practice and then have something phenomenal to solve those issues, issues for them. It really is a business model driven around exceeding the expectations of your patients. We want patients that think that they should walk in just to see clearly, walk away getting that, plus all the added benefits of feeling significantly better. And when you do that, you've got a walking billboard in your local market saying, man, Dr. Jones, change the way I think about my vision and, my, and what my prescription can do in my life. And that's the patient doctor relationship we were excited to continue to reinforce. And Aaron, I'll say that what you just said is a really common experience among ODs that I talk to, because even in sort of my early days in Neuralens, when I was, when I was really, you know, I've been an optical for a long time, but getting my head around, um, this binocular vision space, which I which I hadn't spent a lot of time in, talking to uh, ODs that I trust, and and unilaterally you'd hear, you know, I would ask them, would would prescribing more prism help more patients? And you would get you would get a yes, 100% of the time. But then you ask the follow up question, well, why don't why don't ODs prescribe more prism? And the answer was really twofold. It's incredibly hard to measure, and as Davis said, it's it's a little more art than science. It's a lot of experimentation and a lot of guesswork and a lot of a lot of kind of tweaking until you feel like you get it right. And then the second piece of that is they would say, you know, it, patients tend to chase it or eat it or however they wanted to say it. Um, but really, the 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 magical simplicity of Neuralens was it solved both sides of the of the problem. It solved the problem of it's incredibly hard to measure with with uh, measurement technology with really. Um, incredible uh, feat of engineering that was NMD1, 2, and now and now N3, um, which makes it, again, even more practice friendly, even more accessible to more ODs. And then the second piece of that with the, uh, the contoured prism, the tapered prism, however you want to think about it, but the idea of not having to over-prescribe at distance to get the right amount of prism at near, again, elegant simplicity, but works incredibly well. So solving both of the big challenges that the majority of ODs were facing and making binocular vision accessible to everyone, I mean, that's the gold standard. And I feel like we've really accomplished that more than ever now with N3. And I'll add uh, one more challenge, and that's educating patients. Because when we start talking about alignment, I, I immediately start speaking French or Italian or whatever they don't understand. Because I get that deer in a headlight look trying to explain it and I'm using my arms and my and hands and trying to point to different things. So making it uh, understandable, tactile for them uh, is super, super important. And, and the challenge we found is we, we prior to Neuralens, we used a lot of prism, um, but there'd be two different measurements. What do I give them at distance? What do I give them at near? Uh, they're 25, they don't want two pairs of glasses. What do I give them? Right. Do I, do I undercorrect here, which I have to at near because I can't kill them at, uh, or kill them is the wrong word. I can't, you know, mess up their vision at distance, but then I'm not doing what they, what they need. Um, or if I try to talk them into two pairs, cause there's a big difference, you know, they, it's the, are you overselling me on something? You know, I'm not my grandma. I don't need reading glasses. I don't need computer glasses. And so it was really challenging to, to help them understand the disparity. And it was challenging for me to know exactly where, where it was. So there was a lot of, you know, hey, I'm going to give you this. I want you to come back if it doesn't seem to be solving the challenges and the issues that, that we looked at because I, I didn't know. Right? And I'm sure I've got colleagues listening who are going to message us and say, well, you know, dummy, you went to school and you, you, know, you should know and here's the formula. I don't use the formula, right? I don't remember the formula. Um, but I do want to do what's, what's best for the patients. 
and then translating the discussion that we had in the optical or sorry in the exam lane out to the optical was another barrier because my staff didn't go to school and they're fantastic but how are they going to describe the nuances of binocular vision when they're trying to sell glasses and, and multiple pairs and then add on the complexity of managed vision care and benefits on top of it it's it's really a challenging conversation for them so finding a quick way to measure an accurate way to measure and a consistent way of sharing that message is what we found when we brought in the, uh, the second generation device in the practice uh, about two years ago now so you, you touched on a bunch of things but you know I go back to you being so humble about your BV skills but you're prescribing a ton of prism you know, you're, you're standing out amongst your peers because you look at North America, less than 5% of prescriptions have any prism in them whatsoever. And we know that 50 million Americans every year walk in for their eye exam and could benefit from contoured prism, right? And so what are the challenges to that? You mentioned a bunch in there. The first is with generic prism, straight prism, I, I call it generic prism, um, you've got the same amount from distance to near, and we know from our research, you know, we've now measured over 1.3 million patients, we know that nine out of 10 of them need more prism at near than they do at the distance. So that's the magic of contoured prism. We're giving them the amount of prism that they need at every step in their gaze. Second piece, right, the challenge of educating patients is so hard. You know, the, the number one request we get from optometry is, could you guys do direct-to-consumer advertising? What they're really asking for is, could you get my patients to ask for Neuralens by name? And so one of the things we did with N3 is we took the incredible measurements and ported them into virtual reality, not because it's cool and different, we did it because we wanted to help. We wanted to help by not only measuring, but educating the patient and the third piece that you mentioned is that handoff between doctor and optician. We're gonna be doing that measurement and education in the exam lane. So it's the last thing that they're gonna hear. If they wanna hear more from the doctor, over 80% of them do. They raise their hand at the end of the exam. You confirm, and then it's a handoff to the optician with an educated patient. 98% of them say they understand why their symptoms are linked to their eyes and that's why we see a capture rate 4x higher. So we're really excited about arming optometry with this piece. I'm super excited. So what we've, we've found is that um, the, uh, the, the questions really created a, a, a were disruptive in the exam. And at the very beginning, we, so we pretest everybody and everybody sits through the, the neural lens. Everybody gets asked the questions. We found it was easier to have the techs ask the questions instrument side than have them fill out anything ahead of time, just worked better for us. But there, it was super disruptive because they would immediately look at the text and say, what does this have to do with my eyes? And the techs were able to give a, a one sentence real quick, you know, everything goes through your eyes. And uh, it's all neurological, you know, the, it, the symptoms just, just work their way down. And so now we've got them thinking, took the test, they would give them a real quick summary of it. And the doctor's gonna go over more with you. I need to give them more credit. They actually do, do more than just a, a, a boilerplate explanation. They, they, they personalize it. So for us, it wasn't uncommon to walk in the room and the patient saying, hey, I guess I'm using, I'm getting some new lenses today, right? Some of the, the special lenses they were talking about and it allowed me to reinforce it. But anyway, we, so we measure every single annual eye exam and our capture rate on neural lens is 10%. So that includes the patients that didn't, you know, didn't need anybody. So if I see 100 comprehensive exams, then 10 of them are going to, uh, to buy Neuralens. We also found that our second pair capture rate was higher on the Neuralens patients than it was overall uh, because they saw a difference. And uh, we were really worried about the cost of patient because managed vision care benefits didn't kick in. Um, we priced it as a premium, on par with the premium lenses, uh, Parallax lenses that we're using. And, um, and we do really well selling premium. So for us, it, it, it wasn't a big, uh, a big hurdle and, and we're big on customer service so if you don't like it bring it back get your money back we'll put you into what you need you know we want you happy we're not happy until you are but I was really impressed with that that uh, the 10 percent number and that's averaged over time we started it was a little lower now we're in the last couple of months we're probably up to uh, to 15 percent so I'm really excited though with the the headsets that we're going to be getting in 
in two weeks, right? Brant's nodding at me, he's coming into the practice, uh, because it's going to streamline and standardize even more the education and the discussion. And you go to Starbucks because you have a repeatable expectation that's met every single time. You go to Disney because you have a repeatable expectation that's met every single time. And now I know with this, as fantastic as I am, as my doctors are, as my techs are, we're going to have a repeatable expectation that the patient experience every single time. And it's gonna speed up flow because I can have them run the tests in the exam room while they're waiting for me to shut up and stop talking about dogs and kids and get into a, you know, <laughs> speed up the process. Yeah, well, first of all, I, I, I apologize in advance. New Orleans has, um, a number of just excellent training professionals, but for some reason, I'm going to come in myself and train your practice. So, so sorry in advance. We'll send we'll send an actual trainer at some point to do a good job. But, but no, I'm really I'm really excited. And, and what you just said uh, really touched on something that we've spent a ton of time focusing on. And, and frankly, um, you know, had a few. Uh, let's call them false starts along the way where we had to sort of regroup and rethink, which was how do we put something that really has a, a transformational impact on the practice into a practice flow that isn't disruptive and that, that sort of, for lack of a better, a better way to frame it, tells a story along the way? Because you, you said it exactly right. If a patient walks in and you just sort of hand them a questionnaire cold and you're asking them about neck pain, they're not gonna make an immediate connection for that and they're gonna wonder why they're being asked. And, and I, I almost think it, help, it it makes them put their guard up a little bit. So there's, you know, with the uh, electronic lifestyle index and with, um, you know, uh, the education in, in the device and with uh, things in the portal that the, that the doctor can access in the exam lane that, that really kind of simplify uh, the selling conversation. All of those things have been very deliberate on our part to make this as seamless within a practice flow as we possibly can because we don't want to be disruptive um, to the flow. We don't want the staff to see this as something that they have to sort of add to their plate. We want it to very um, sort of uh, simply kind of fit into an existing practice flow. And again, make those conversations a lot easier. And you, and you touched on something when it came to um, the selling conversation that, that we've seen and, and Pierre and I started together in the industry about 15 years ago. And one of our first projects actually was on how to increase multiple pair. And one thing that we, we sort of saw along the way that a practice that starts selling more premium, you have an all boats rise impact in that practice. And I love the way Stacy Verdon actually puts it, the administrator in Texas. She said, if you want to sell a patient a $500 frame, you better have a $1,000 frame on your board. Um, and, and it's kind of that philosophy of if you get your staff really comfortable and confident selling premium product, you're going to have a lift across the board in your ability to sell premium. We've seen that with multiple pair. We've seen it with uh, AR, digital. We've seen it with sclerals. Uh, across the board, when your practice adopts more premium products, you're going to have a more premium practice. Uh, but most importantly, that translates to a happier patient, right? Um, Patients who are getting more premium product offerings typically have a higher uh, willingness to recommend for their doctor. They're more likely to come back to that doctor. They're more likely to actively recommend that doctor to their friends. So, um, you know, my recommendation as always is, is don't be afraid of product, right? Because that's what creates happy patients. That's what creates successful practices. And so, you know, again, Neuralens just wants to be part of that seamless practice flow and, and the overall premiumization, if that's a word, uh, of the practice. It is now. The, so let's talk about this because I'm a firm believer that it, it doesn't matter how good the doc is if the team around him or her is not top notch. And the, uh, they're, they're fantastic uh, workers, they're, they're incredibly intelligent, but they have a different background than I do. They didn't go to school, thankfully they don't have the student loans that I do. But, so what is the, the onboarding process when you are starting to work with a team to get the staff on board? How do you make sure that we're successful? Because this is disruptive for the practice. It's gonna add time to the flow. It's something else to talk about. It's something else to sell, right? It's just another something the team is, is responsible for um, until they own it. So what's that process look like? 
So with this next chapter, with N3, we're really doubling down on our investment in the practice training and making sure that everyone feels wholly comfortable and confident with executing with ease. So the first step is we actually send a team in to the practice a week or two before the launch, before we ever show up to do a full practice flow assessment and make sure we get a proposal that the you know, the, the ODs and the practice staff feel really good about. That way we show up on the day that we launch the product and we're all aligned and everybody feels like we know what we're doing and it's not a figure out as we build the plane type of experience. Uh, that's a big pivot and it's a huge investment on our part because we're flying people in just to make sure that that is top notch. Then on the launch day, we're going to spend two and a half days in the practice making sure the staff the optometrists feel wholly comfortable and confident that we picked the right protocol, everything is flowing smoothly, that everybody understands the different components of the technology, how it's messaged to the patient, how it could be handed off extremely well in the optical, and that, to, to be quite honest, everybody's super comfortable with a premium private pay conversation with the, with the, with the patient. And we believe in that so heavily because we don't, we don't look at ourselves as premium. We look at ourselves as probably the most cost-effective thing this patient could do for these issues. And it's because we, we think that we are totally worth it for the, that patient. And then we back it up in case they don't feel like it, it met their needs, that the, 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 the practice has that opportunity to say, we don't want you to be spending money on something that's not going to fulfill this, this gap in your life, so we'll take care of you. So we, we've really invested in coming in a few weeks ahead of time, doing a full practice flow walkthrough, spending a few days in the practice just to make sure everything's ironed out. And then we've got a, a regular cadence with a dedicated account manager that's going to be in the practice, in, in, in person and virtual as needed. So we've got a full pod structure of people ready to help tackle any practice needs that come up. Yeah, that's awesome, and I can attest to that firsthand. What I also found was really neat is part of that onboarding process, and it's probably assumed, but it's worth calling out, is measuring the staff. So they get to go through this process as, as a patient and discovering how many issues they have. They work for us, and so we didn't pick up on it. They didn't say it to us. Right? They're not complaining because I'm making them stare at an iPad and a computer screen all day long at work. At least they're getting paid for it. The, um, and so finding, finding those issues getting them in a neural lens and then hearing their own stories because nothing is as powerful as a story and nothing in the most powerful story is your own. Um, my story is I, I, as I've gotten older, I, I get motion sickness. You know, I, I, I'm the perfect dad at Disney because I sit and hold all the bags while everybody else goes on rides. And uh, my kids laugh because they get to pick a ride. They go on me in the morning, one in the afternoon, anything more than that. And I'll be sitting on a bench near a trash can. Um, but getting the neural lens allowed me to engage more with them on adventures like that. And how do you put a price on spending time with your kids on the ride and in the picture, not waiting to hear about the story when they, they, they come off and meeting them at the exit. Um, so, so having them have their own story because now they can engage with patients. They can tell them exactly how it worked for them, how it made a difference for them. It doesn't have to be huge, right? It could just be, I go home a little bit happier, right? When I go home, I'm a happy mom. You know, I'm not just annoyed. I don't yell at my kids when I first walk in the, the door or, it, you know, whatever the case may be. My migraines are less. You know, we may not eliminate everything, but if we can reduce just the, the negative that we have to deal with, we improve the quality of life. And to your point, that's incredibly cost effective um, because you can't put a price tag on happy. But you think about what you just said, right? And, and you're downplaying it. But to me, that, that's a life changing outcome. Right, the ability to enjoy time with your kids at the end of the day, that's not a minor thing, right? And, and we hear these each and every day. I mean, one of the greatest things about working at Neuralens is the proactive outreach that we get from patients, from industry. Uh, we had one just yesterday, right? And a person that works in the industry came by. They don't work at Neuralens. They came by specifically to tell us about their 10-year-old daughter and 10 year old daughter was having headaches on a daily basis but they thought oh it's normal you know and they put him into Neuralens and she said my child's self-confidence has changed her grades have gotten better 
she's a different kid at school because of Neuralens. And we hear those each and every day. But what you're describing is where we think the, the benefit is for 50 plus million Americans, right? It's these dull headaches at the end of the day. Those are normal, right? Because I work at a computer all day long, right? Those, those dull, dull neck pains that everybody gets those, right? And I, I link it back to, you know, my experience as a child, um, you know, decent baseball player, turned 14 years old, all of a sudden I couldn't hit the baseball anymore. And fortunately, I had a coach come to my dad and say, hey, have you ever had Pierre do an eye exam? And he said, no, his vision's fine. He's not complaining about it. And we went in and I had minus 275, horrible sill. And I will always remember that first day back in, on the diamond wearing contact lenses and being able to see the pitcher's eyes, seeing the rotation on the ball. And to me, that's a perfect example of these patients in every practice that think what they're experiencing is normal and they could be living such a better life. And that's what keeps me up at night is how do we get those people? Well, that's cool. My, um, you brought up school, uh, students in school. My wife's a uh, high school teacher and I've got uh, uh, almost 20 year old, a 17 year old and a 12 year old. And looking at the, the way they're taught now is significantly different than the way I was taught. We were taught uh, to memorize facts, take a test, you know, force multiple choice, pick your, your best answer out of four and move on. Looking at, at the grading structures and what they're, they're taught now, getting A's is tough because, and, and I'm talking middle school, elementary school, and, and high school, not just college, because knowing the answer is not good enough, they need to know why the answer. So one plus one doesn't equal two, but why does one plus one equal two? Um, and, uh, and if you're struggling at all with visual input and, and whatever energies that's taking, that's less energy to be able to process and learn the why behind it. And we can argue, you know, plus minus on, on if that education style is positive. That's not the point. The point is that the demands for them are so much. And on top of that, they're not learning on pen and paper. My kids all got issued a Chromebook in kindergarten, day one, mm -hmm. all the way through high school. They, they, it's on a Chromebook. Their homework is on Google Classroom. Everything is on that darn computer. Um, to the point where I get into fights with teachers because I want them to learn how to write. And uh, side story, in, in high school it's interesting, because of chat GPT, they're having to make kids go back and write essays in class by hand to, to know that they didn't cheat on it. They don't have the manual dexterity in their hands to write a full page paper. So they're having to do workups, <laughs> just writing to build the muscle tone in their, uh, in their hands to hold a pencil that long. But uh, I don't know if New Orleans can help that, but it certainly can help with the, uh, the, the visual processing. Well, I, I think you're hitting into an important component that's, it's hard to conceptualize, even myself. Um, so, Pierre, Pierre talked a little bit about having a significant impact, even a life-changing outcome. And naturally, we just jump to, that's a rare thing. That only happens every so often. And so that's kind of also how we look for it. But what we're finding with Neuralens is you could do that every day with the amount of patients that have this issue. This should and could become an everyday occurrence where you have that level of impact in a patient's life. It might be someone struggling in school because now we're being forced to be within arm's length on a Google Chromebook all day long. It might be someone that isn't the mom or, or, or father they want to be after a long day behind spreadsheets, working billing codes. It, it, they are there. They're actually, as you mentioned, they're likely a staff member in the practice or a family member of a staff member in the practice. So those stories are there and they, they are for optometry's taking. Uh, and, and we're so excited for them for that. And that's what I think is the mind shift is just because the, it, the impact could be so great doesn't mean it has to be rare. It could be and should be every day in the practice. You, I, I just want to build on that because that's where we get so excited about the future for optometry and the future for Neuralens is can we help people with debilitating headaches? Absolutely. Can, these, these huge cases, these home run cases, no doubt. But to Davis's point, we can help almost everybody live a little bit better. We, we just did a, a reading speed study. You, you mentioned school, right? We love to challenge ourselves. So we did a reading speed study 
and we looked at people wearing neural lenses versus people wearing a premium pair of eyeglasses. After only seven days of wear, their reading speed, their productivity increased by 70%. So you think about that. We're now no, not talking about getting people back to quote unquote normal. We're talking about improving their productivity. And that is huge. Uh, you know, so we're just scratching the surface of how we can help patients live better lives. And, and that's what gives us goosebumps. But I was looking at, at Davis as he was answering the question and, and it brought me back to that light bulb moment that I had where I knew I needed to be on this team was when he said, you know, digital devices and digital eye strain is exploding. And, you know, Brent and I had been doing this since our first day in the industry 15 years ago with blue light and anti-fatigue lenses. And he said, what if it had nothing to do with digital devices at all? And blue light and everything else was not the solution. And that was like a splash of cold water in my face because I just came to this industry to help people. And to, when, that, when he said that, and he used the example of jewelry workers, you know, pre-industrial revolution, having the same symptoms, we called it astinopia back then, as we do today, Digital eye strain has nothing to do with digital devices and everything to do with how we use our eyes. That's not going away. And we've got a solution here that could change lives for everybody in optometry practices today. So I get, a, I get goosebumps just talking about that. No, that's super, that's super cool. The, uh, I, I had thoughts and that turned me uh, in, in a different direction. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I, I want to go back to something Davis touched on and, and really highlighted. Too often, I think, with this product or any other product, we look for the patient that needs it, mm -hmm. and we, we reserve the technology just for them. Uh, I'm going to parallel this to another device that we recently brought into the practice, and that was the Life Meter by uh, Mackey Health is distributing. And, I have a lot of colleagues who reserve testing the carotenoid, the skin carotenoid levels, unless the patient has macular degeneration or they, they're finding, they're self-selecting, but they're missing everybody that's otherwise looking healthy. Say they eat healthy, they have horribly low levels of skin carotenoid levels, if you didn't know. If you're using the neural lens and only measuring the patients that you think are symptomatic, who are you missing? And the, the thing I'm most excited about with the N3 is you're forcing me to use it on everybody. Now we use it on everybody, but you're forcing me to use it on everybody because you know better. And you are building in a systematic process so that it's less disruptive to the flow. And it, 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 we're just gonna find more people. We're gonna find more of those issues and help people that didn't even know they had a challenge. Now, I'm not saying we make up issues because that's not, uh, that's not ethical, but the issues are there. And if we're not finding them, who is? And if we're not treating them, who is? Well, and you touched on something incredibly important that I, that I, I tell a lot of our, our customers and partners, which is, if, you're, if your patients who are having symptoms are not coming to you to relieve those symptoms, believe me when I say they're going somewhere, right? They're, they're turning to, uh, at the very least, you know, they're, they're on a, a two ibuprofen a day habit. Uh, but, but a lot of them are going even further. They're going to massage therapists, Botox, chiropractors, uh, even, even prescription medications and things like that. So, um, so you really have to, again, why it's so important to start with um, understanding the symptoms and uncovering those, but then going through the education and having that exam room process because you'll uncover a lot in those conversations with those patients because for better or worse, in the information age, a lot of patients have sort of already self-diagnosed. So, you know, you'll talk to them and you'll say, oh, you really don't get any neck pain? Well, well yeah, I do, but it's because of my posture. They've already decided that. Or, you know, oh, you never get... You, it seems like you use the computer a lot. You never get headaches at the end of the day. Well, two ibuprofen takes care of it. I'm good. You know, and so they're self-medicating. 
Um, so it, it, those conversations will uncover, again, what we've, what we've spent a lot of time today talking about, which is just that average day-to-day -day patient that has decided that this is just what life is like and that there is no help for them. And you're right, those, those, um, those home run cases are extremely gratifying. And, and, and listen, obviously Neuralins finds them gratifying too because we, we have those, uh, those videos and those testimonials and we love to put those out there and where, where the patient truly has a life altering, they've, they've got, it's a debilitating uh, problem for them and we're able to solve that. Those are incredibly gratifying to be able to do that. But for the for the vast majority, it's just about that. It's just about, you know, uh, at the end of the day, I'm not as tired, and and I can get more. I can go home, and I can I can be more present with my family, and I can get more done while I'm at work, and I don't have to take work home with me. That's just as gratifying because that is the majority of that's me. That's that's us, right? That's the majority of people. That's the experience they're going to have. So again, a very simple conversation about are, are you are, are these symptoms happening to you at the end of the day you'll uncover with the vast majority of your patients the answer is going to be yes I like that and that I don't think we can uh, uh, over I'm trying to think of the word the um, uh, over uh, under importantize that's not the word right we need to, we need to make it a, we're making up words today yeah uh, but going home happy I sell more happy mom and happy dad glasses than I do computer glasses because they don't care about helping on the computer they do care about being happy when they get home with their kids they it's it's the emotion it's the, it, the what engages them what helps them in their lifestyle to make them happy see and um, it whether it's you know can I ride in a car with my family because I, I, I you know motion sickness I talked about my Disneyland uh, story right yeah yeah I mean that that's that's one of the biggest life changers that people experience right I, I, my, my wife's one one of them that thought oh it, it's normal for me to get car sick when I try to work on my laptop in a passenger seat right and it isn't right and since wearing neural lenses she's great she can work for hours on there. And that those, those are the things we're starting to discover, right? The, the central and peripheral systems and all of the implications of that, uh, we don't even know where this is gonna go. But it is exciting that we've got partners in independent optometry. Vision Source has been such a great partner for us because they see it, right? They see that it's about the patient, it's about living better lives, we're not selling eyeglasses, right? We're changing lives here and in big ways and small. W one of the things that you'll feel in the booth, and I, I know you've experienced it, is the passion that our team has for what we're doing. The reason for that for many of them is they came to Neuralens after getting Neuralenses and having their lives changed. Our head of Canada, right, wasn't even in the industry. He was working in cardiology for 17 years and wore neural lenses. He was a guy that was on the eight a day Advil diet and thought that was normal and wore neural lenses and that was gone. That disappeared within weeks. And he thought, gosh, I, I wanna be a part of this, right? We've got sales reps that are out in the field that are adamant about getting the industry to adopt this technology because they were working for another company in the industry. One of their providers had neural lens. They got measured out of curiosity and it changed their life. So we're just excited to do this with more Vision Source members, getting more patients to experience the life they could be leading through Neuralens. You know, if I can, I wanna unpack something that you said a little earlier about just the making sure, you know, the, the feeling that you have to make sure you've got a, a patient you know that you're gonna help or else the ethical dilemma of I, I might be pushing a product on them that they don't need. And we, we, we looked at the Neuralens business model when we were first getting started down in San Diego and, and, and we've evolved obviously, but one of the things I think is really critical is these patients have something that is affecting their life and their lifestyle. And this could be a, you know, they may be a 10 year old and it's gonna be an 80 year problem, or they could be a 20 year old and it's gonna be a 60 year problem for them. 
but this is going to be a problem for an extended period of time. And what we started to identify is we know there's no medical, real medical risk to them trying Neuralens. So we have that to take off the table and we're fortunate for that. So now all of the risk shifts to if I buy it and it doesn't work for me, I've put some money to work that I can't get back. So we think about the ethics and integrity that we really want to do for patients. So what if we removed that financial risk for them? And we said, do Neuralens, it's going to work for you. And if, if the optometry practice feels like they should, say, if it doesn't work for you, come back to me and I'm going to get you into, the, into the, another set of, of lenses and we're going to take care of all the financial risk for you. And we've done that. And so we wanted to remove that barrier so that feeling of I'm doing the right thing just to try, just to make sure I don't leave it on off the table for someone that could have had a 60 year benefit for in their life. That's what we want, and there's a lot of them. Well, I applaud you guys for standing behind the product. We've, I will say, we've had one or two come back. Nothing works for everybody. Uh, but by far and away, they're happy and, uh, with it, and, and not only happy with it, they came back and buy a second pair. Is that our, our second pair sales are higher on Neuralens than they are on uh, our, our, the rest of our optical, um, which is a, a, a strong second pair uh, sales optical. Um, and they still need glasses. So financially, from a business perspective, I'm not out, I'm just repurposing. Um, I do think that, and we found it works for us, that we hit the pricing structure right away. I talk about it in the exam room, I don't get into the details, but I say it's the premium product. And unfortunately, there's no managed vision care benefits that cover it because managed vision care isn't designed to give you what you need. It's, to, it's designed to give you the bare minimum, and the, you know, I, I believe you need this. And, uh, we've got payment structures, you know, so we, we address the finances, and then we move off of it to talk about the benefits, and ultimately, it's the patient's decision. And if they want to do it today, great. If they don't, I've noted it, so when they come back next year, or if they are dealing with asthenopia issues, and they are symptomatic, we schedule them back in three to six months. Right? Is this getting any better? If it's not, we still have the other option we talked about on the table. Yeah, and, and, and you really touched on uh, something that's, that's important and very pragmatic about how to discuss um, the cost of, of neural lenses with, with a patient. And, you know, at the risk of oversimplifying, my answer to that is really always, always sort of threefold. <clears throat> Number one is reframing the conversation away from just a traditional pair of glasses to more of a medical device. And, and you know, the second part is that what I just said kind of falls back to what I, what I was talking about earlier, which is just because your, your patient isn't currently uh, doing anything uh, related to their visual system to treat their symptoms, they're doing something, right? And, and a lot of those things have a price tag. And a lot of those things in a lot of cases are very expensive, right? Uh, prescription medication, um, you know, uh, over a, a daily uh, regimen of over-the-counter medication even, or, or going, uh, you know, monthly Botox or chiropractic, all of those things have a price tag. So know that just because they're not spending their money on glasses, they're spending their money on something. And so the comparison of uh, neural lenses to a traditional pair of lenses isn't the whole picture, right? It's a comparison to all of the other things that they're doing to treat those symptoms. And, and then the third piece when it comes to the managed vision care uh, part, and, and again, this is really just kind of bare bones practical, but one of our highest, when we look at uh, all of neural lens wearers and their overall how satisfied they are with neural lens and how willing they are to recommend neural lens to friends and family, which is sort of our gold standard in terms of whether the patient really had the right experience that we're looking for, one of our, our highest outcomes categories is people who wear neural lenses over contacts. Right, so in a lot of cases, you'll have people who come in with their managed vision care benefits who are contact lens wearers. It's a great opportunity to get them into their annual supply using their managed vision care benefits and then get them into a plano pair of neural lenses to wear over their contacts. And so, you know, 
that that sort of satisfies a, a several things with the patient, right? They're able to use their benefits, which they've paid into, so they're happy about that. And then you sort of frame it as, and with the money we saved you there because you have managed vision care, um, we're going to be able to, to, to treat your symptoms as well with a pair of neural lenses that you can wear situationally over your contacts throughout the day. That's another great way to make sure that people who come in with managed vision care still get uh, the, the outcomes. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it's it's you sort of have to just reframe it from, let's not compare the cost of this to the cost of different types of lenses. Let's compare the cost of this with all the other costs that stack up throughout the year that, that to, to deal with just the daily nagging symptoms, right? Well, that's fantastic. And I'm really excited to listen to all the best practices, the stories that were coming out of uh, the offices that are getting the N3. Stacy Verdon's a good friend of mine, and I, 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 she can't stop talking about it. And I'm a little jealous that she got to be part of the pilot. We'll talk about that off the uh, the podcast. It's but, um, two weeks, Aaron. You can <laughs> wait two weeks. Come on, man. Yeah. I, I, when I got to see it as a, a the early preview, it's it's like knowing what you're going to get for Christmas, but having to wait for Christmas. This has been rough, Brent. Um, <laughs> No, we're, we're super excited, and uh, clearly uh, the, the booth is starting to get packed up here. Hopefully the background noise isn't too bad, but lots of individuals with, uh, with headsets on, lots of smiles afterwards and, and nodding. Um, if you haven't tried it and you're listening to this, reach out to Neuralens. Do yourself a favor and just get tested. I sounded like a bad PSA, but uh, reach, <laughs> reach out, get tested, experience what your patients will experience through the headset. It's interactive, it's fun, it's a positive experience. It's really self-driven by them. And I think that the education that comes along with it, even if they're not somebody who needs a neural lens, it builds the experience in the practice and they will know somebody who does have that issue. And they can communicate that to, to their friends and you know, look at a referral base or whatnot, but we, we've got issues that we're solving and I appreciate you guys and all you're doing to help us take care of our patients.